Welcome to the FX Masterclass and today's topic is on uh, FX Wildcat and this is going to be the first generation non-MK2 all right so let's start off and totally dismantle FX Wildcat first you want to remove the stock and there's two screws here one by the right here and one here all right you're gonna need a a three mil uh, best to use a ball allen because on the rear here you can't really uh, direct you know contact with the screw it has to be at an angle because of the stock Alright, right, to be safe, we have to depressurize the air tube, and there is 150 bar pressure in there. The quickest way and safest way to bleed the pressure is by this on the left hand side of uh, action, there's a brass plug here. Go ahead and loosen that. This requires a 4 mil. While it's bleeding, don't bleed it on a field side. And you can bleed it really, really slow if you loosen the gauge, but if you do it too fast, you lose pressure here. I mean, the pressure will be lower here than the reg pressure side. So it will push the regulator forward. Then your regulator will be out of place. You, you, when it does that, your O-ring here, well, the hole for your regulator breathe hole, it will bleed out of there. So it's to keep the regulator in a position or position, bleed it by this brass plug. All right. So don't be in a hurry while you're bleeding this. Sometimes, you know, it takes a while to bleed this. Even though you got the plug out, it'll still be bleeding. Because there's a little bit of air residue in the front of the regulator. You gotta verify he's on zero. And a slight pressure here. There's your plug. Underneath the plug is your washer seal. All right, now we're gonna remove the cheek piece, cheek rest. Uh, should be a three mil screw. Now, let's go in and remove the barrel. It's only one screw, so three mil. Kind of just twist and pull.
Now we're going to remove the side plate. Like uh, it's going to be a two mil. Uh, we need to remove the side plate to remove a little screw here on the uh, pellet probe. If you don't, the uh, pellet probe won't slide out. All right. Then you gotta remove the spring for your magazine activating uh, actuator level lever here. And here is the, the screw I'm trying to remove. And these require one and a half mil. Now, it's a hammer spring adjuster, it's a brass piece. Usually they're, they're locked tighted on. But you gotta heat it up if you can't break it loose. Uh, this particular hammer spring adjuster has more meat in there and you can apply a lot of torque to break the thread lock on it. All right, you can remove the, the spring. Before you get the hammer out, you need to remove the, the shear assembly. Let's go and uh, take out the trigger. It's, uh, there's three holes here. It's the lower one. You just push it in halfway to clear. So don't push the whole pin out. You have it halfway out. You gotta hold it down because the spring there wants to shove the trigger assembly out like that. Then you have your spring. Now we're gonna push the rear hole where the pin's at. That holds the, the actual shear. Just kind of flip it over, it'll drop out. Oh, the pin also drops out. And a hammer on. There's your shear. Yeah. Then your hammer. And sometimes when his hammer takes a beating, it has a little high spot it just doesn't fall out you just gotta push it out like that there's your hammer the pins you can pull out if they're just dingling there all right now we're going to remove the, the probe assembly and a cocking mechanism here to do that you need to flip it over on this cocking rod here on the other side is two set screws for the rod. I'm going to loosen that. Just loosen one turn. Just grab the rod, kind of push it to the rear, and you'll have the cocking linkage and a probe. Just kind of keep it like this. It'd be helpful if you take a picture of this. Uh, it's easier to reassemble later. Sometimes it's hard to remember, but. And you flip it over. There's a little pin there that catches the hammer. And that's how it cocks it. All right. Uh, to reassemble this a little quicker, before you took Take this apart. I usually mark it here and there on the action. A little marker to put this rod in position. 
If you forget to do that, we'll set it later and we'll set the position of the probe. All right, there's a certain measurement for that. We'll go in detail when we reassemble this. For now, we just kind of just take it apart. All right, then, you know, to remove the air tube. Usually, you just grab the air tube and some, it could break in its joint here or here by the hex. So it depends where it would break. All right, before you do that, there's a little clamp here. It clamps the air tube so it doesn't move. We'll loosen that. It's a three mil. There's four of them. Let the smell of snapping iron. Just grab the action and just turn. And as I notice, it's separating here. Bear with me, it's a long thread. There you go. When you do this, your regulator spacer could fall out just like this here. Reg spacer. And here's your air tube. And you, and you can see is your regulator here, your adjustment uh, nut. Usually, grab a needle nose just to yank it out. And it's your regulator. You can separate the regulator. There'll be a separate video on how to uh, reseal and set this regulator uh, with the reg tester. So we'll do that in some other video. All right. And this trigger linkage here, you know, they're set. And you take this apart, it takes a while to reset it. So just keep it intact. Now, you need to grab a, there's a hex fitting here that would separate this from the action, this uh, tube adapter here. But sometime, let me try. If it's not too tight, I can do it with my hand. adapter all right now we got to remove this adapter here this requires a 15 mil the reason I get this uh, adapter out is get access to this valve here adapter and the other one towards a 10 mil this year Bob retainer a spring And your valve. 
Uh, now we're going to remove the, the valve seat inside the action. Uh, we, in a way, we need to remove this piece here so we have gain access to this more of a direct pull from a tweezer to get in there, but it is kind of hard. So we just remove this uh, this piece where your um, stock screw screws onto. There's only two screws holding it in. Then I could flip it like that so I could have more direct access to the valve seat. Use the tweezer. There's your valve seat. And this components here, you don't need to take off. All right. Now, let's continue to disassemble the air tube. All right. Well, the gauge is only requires 11 mil to get it out, but there's a check valve in here for your fill probe area. Usually, I get something soft like a Delron plastic. Let's see if I'm strong enough. There you go. So there's no pressure there, easy to unscrew. On his air tube, you know, the label then is on the rear. Alright. And. And here is where your check valve would be. They require four, like a five mil. Let's see if I can hold my hand here. Retainer, there's a hole in the middle of it, and your little check valve with the o ring on it. All right, if you feel it and you bleed your pressure and continue to, uh, you know, air come out of the hole here, I mean, usually this o ring need to be replaced. All right. All right. We dismantled the FX Wildcat. This includes this topic. If you got any question, leave the comments below, and we'll catch you next video.